You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Monday, January 25th. It is Mental Health Monday. It is also Welcome Back Sarah Monday. It is (laughs) uh, Snow Day for (laughs) students in (laughs) in Norfolk, Nebraska. What else can we throw on there today? (laughs) Well, it's also National Lutheran Schools Week. Yes, it uh, is. Which I am pretty excited about. We have some great stories to share throughout the week for National Lutheran Schools Week. Um, It is Mental Health Monday, and we'll get to that here in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin, for your support of the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. Well, it is time for Mental Health Monday with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman. Good morning, Heidi. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you all on this snowy Nebraska morning. <laughs> How are things in the Gaiman household today? It's good. It's good. It's a little chaotic, so you might hear some background noise, but that's okay. It's, it's a good day when I get to do my work and spend time with my kids, so that's very exciting for me. So. We, we call those background noises authenticity in, in our work. Mm, I'm good at that. That's like my, that's my specialty. <laughs> <laughs> Today we're going to talk about relationships. So I'm really, I this is of course uh, the title of my podcast is Life in Relationship, Relationship and Genuine Relationship, Authentic Relationship, if you will, is something that I firmly believe in, and I really believe is the secret sauce is what I like to call it of the church on earth um, that people are really hungry for, um, and it's one of the ways that people will both. Uh, learn about, get to know Jesus, but then also be able to be comforted and cared for um, in Jesus's arms by the people all around them in the church of Christ. And so today I wanted to talk about two parts. How do we begin relationships? And then how do we grow relationships? And this is part of our series, Always Growing, this month at HeidiGaiman.com. We have a video on YouTube, on the Heidi Gaiman Writes YouTube channel or the Facebook page on relationships and growth with uh, Heather Roosh, our life ed advocate friend um, within the LCMS, and she has a lot of wisdom to share in this too. But today, you know, I just think it's really helpful. It is kind of confusing to know where to start for relationships, and a lot of us are hungry for friendships. We know from LCMS research that friendship in particular is one burden that the workers feel is harder because of ministry life. But I found in my own therapy practice and life in a local community that friendships are hard for everybody. So, yeah, I think it'll be good to talk about beginning those things and growing those things. So let's dive in to that first part. How do we begin relationships? You know, there's a building block, if you will, of relationships. And this comes out of the research from the Gottman Institute, which is uh, through the University of Washington. And they talk about at length bids for connection, bids for connection. And there's a separate article about this on my website, too, if you want to know specifically more about bids for connection within different relationships. But bids for connection if you can mental image this, is where we kind of throw out an offer to someone for relationship and they either return that offer or they drop it on the floor or they turn away from it. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's kind of a painful and also awesome. I know it's terrifying, right? (laughs) Like, did I just help everyone's social anxiety? You're welcome. Um, But the thing is, in order to keep ourselves safe, we kind of stay away from that mental image and understanding this building block of relationship. And so then we end up very confused in our communication, not quite sure how to make these connections. Once we understand them, we can, it's just like anything else. Once we have the truth, once we have a little bit of information coupled with God's grace in our lives and his purpose and meaning and value in our hearts for ourselves, we can move forward. You know, yes, it's terrifying if I don't have Jesus. It's terrifying because I'm waiting to see if someone will accept me or not. It is it is scary with Jesus, but my value is not wrapped up in that. And so that's how we can go forth in relationship and bid and be vulnerable. Um, but also, you know, always have boundaries. If someone's going to drop your bid on the floor constantly, that is not the person to build a friendship 
with. You know, you can have um, some yeses and nos in your life, if you will. And so bids can be verbal and nonverbal if we look at them closer. Bidding to a spouse might look like saying, hey, I'd like to go out on a date on Saturday night. Bidding to a friend might be an, an invitation for coffee. Uh, but bidding can also be very, very low key. It might be a tap on the shoulder. Um, it might be a smile in the grocery store. So bids can be as tiny and as large as you want them to be. And the thing I'll say that's really interesting to me is some people who are bidding they do it in ways that other people find offensive. <laughs> it's really wild. I I can think of, uh, you know, someone in one of our other congregations that we have been in before, and she constantly was telling me the typos on my website. Like, oh, mm -hmm. did you know that you had this typo here? And I was like, why, why, why? <laughs> but after a bit, when I stood back and looked at it, I realized she was just trying to create conversation. Like she didn't understand how to start. And so knowing that bids for connection are a thing help you to see the bid within the larger picture that may not be your favorite way or may not be connecting with you personally. And then to reach out in respond to that bid, but in a way that transfers the conversation to something that you can manage that is, in, you know, like nails on a chalkboard for you. And so, uh, you know, we, we want to believe that relationships start without a bid, you know, and we never want to be the bidder. We want someone to come to us. We want someone to pick up the phone and call us. Actually, I never want someone to call us. We want someone to pick up the phone and text mm -hmm. us. Right? Yes. Uh, we want <laughs> someone to reach out to us and invite us in. And that is that is good. That's a good desire. But bids start relationships. So if you're hungry for relationships, I understand the pain and struggle of bidding and, and the concern and heartbreak that maybe you've had before. But this is the way that relationships begin. And so I really encourage the listener, if you've struggled with friendships before, put yourself out there lightly. It doesn't have to be this huge invitation. It can just be conversation, you know? So bidding is something that we can receive, but I think that God also calls us to do the bidding. And that's the part for us that's a little bit harder. Um, so relationships exist only where vulnerability is present. And vulnerability at its core takes courage. It is it is that act of being strong and courageous that we reflect on so often in scripture. Uh, when we are called to the battleground, if you will, of creating relationships, because this is spiritual warfare. The devil doesn't want you to have solid friendships. He doesn't want you to be surrounded by love and care and concern. And so understand that when we bid, especially when it's been a while or it's really hard for us, that this is the armor of God at work. Um, so bring it to him in prayer before you go do it. Come back and lean on him after you've put out that bid. Those are some ways to kind of cushion it, if you will, with his grace. So, you know, I think, Andy, and oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just say, I think that that's a really good example of what we've tried to do with the coffee hour, too, mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've we've put this bid out there. Come join us for coffee and uh, mm -hmm. just have some time to to chat with us. Now, granted, because it's it's radio, it's podcast, it's pretty one sided. <laughs> <laughs> pretty <laughs> uneven um mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. but that's th that's really what we wanted to do as you were talking about you know that that bid mm -hmm. in a, a friendship to invite one mm -hmm. out for coffee that's that's precisely what we wanted to do here too was to yeah to invite yeah. the the listener to to join us for coffee and and chat about the the things that are important to us yeah, I love that. And, you know, we would be fooling ourselves if we didn't recognize the vulnerability in that, especially yeah. when you're <laughs> doing ministry or you are doing something that is, you know, has some meaning for people in it. Uh, there's vulnerability in offering that work out there and saying, hey, come join us and whether people pick it up or not. Um, and so that's one reason ministry life um, or just life in the church and volunteer work and all that even is 
it feels vulnerable to put those bids out there, to invite someone to a Bible study that you're leading or to invite someone in in any way within the body of Christ is going to feel a little bit more vulnerable at times, even than our other relationships. So that's a really good one. And also let's talk about that one sidedness for a second is that Mm -hmm. there are going to be relationships where that's really real and it's okay. Recognizing it again is so vital. I think about this with elderly people in nursing homes, especially, Especially. We don't stop visiting them because they have a hard time responding at times or because it's weird and awkward and things smell strange. Like we have to care for the people in our lives and recognize when they only have so much capability and not put their value in that. This is, you know, it was life Sunday yesterday at our church, at least. This is part of life um, and valuing life is valuing all people and what they can offer. And I would say that you'll see this a lot with people who have experienced trauma, especially. They can only give you so much. They're only so capable. So be aware that there are going to be relationships in your life that are calling you to offer maybe a little bit more. We are not about 50-50s here. That is not how relationships work. That doesn't mean it has to be like 95-5, you know, but at the same time, just being aware of where God is asking you and calling you to step in with his grace um, versus where you need boundaries and things like that. So, all right, Mm -hmm. before we go to the next section, I wanted to ask you guys the question, what vulnerabilities do you see exist in creating and sustaining those relationships? So you can talk about it with relationship to the coffee hour, or you can talk about it in um, your life in the church or whatever, but what do you think is kind of getting in the way? What are those barriers that we feel come in? What are their barriers or what? I thought the question was about vulnerability. So that's what I was prepared to talk about. <laughs> that's true. I just like did the switch. No, so, I mean, I kind of see I, that was an assumption. Sorry. Thanks, Andy. Um, talk about vulnerability. Sorry. But no, like I think the vulnerabilities feel like barriers to our systems. Like yes. that there is oh, okay. this place, you know, gotcha. where it's. The vulnerability feels so raw that it's it's hard for us to create or sustain relationships. Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. Now I've built it up like I had some great answer, but I didn't. Yeah, <laughs> didn't have a really great answer. <laughs> but just the the vulnerabilities um, in creating or sustaining relationships is the that I think in my own experience has been to uh, be willing to open up about my faults to be very open about my faults and uh, my failures and uh, to, to be able to to talk about them freely in those relationships. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. useful that is. <laughs> no, 100% that you're not, you, there's no fake mask. I mean, that's yeah. where real relationship is going to begin. Otherwise, it's just people hanging out together. You know, that's a big difference Which from is, relationships. Yeah. It has its value, but it's not going to fill us in the way that relationship is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that um, was very deep. Go ahead, Sarah. <laughs> we were like, uh, we had I, to both, all of us stopped and we're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, thinking through moving to a new place in a new church a few years ago and trying to make friends, which is a really hard thing for me. Um, I think the, the two things that, that come up a lot are imposing. Like, I don't want to be an imposition on other people's relationships that mm. they already have. Um, and mm. believing that I am uh, a worthy enough person to be a friend to someone. That sounds really dark, but like mm, under, but knowing like along to say the, the same lines. Yeah. Along the same lines of what Andy is saying of, of um, you know, being willing to share my, the faults that I know very well of, of, of um, thinking that I am, that someone else is going to be okay with, with those and presenting those to mm-hmm. someone and being like, Hey, I'm, this is who I am. If you want to be my friend, please be my friend. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I know we need to take a break. I think a good way to like move to the next section on growth is to settle and rest a little bit in Psalm 139. Um, And especially verses one through six, it uses the word no a lot in presence. And so just the very first line of that says, oh, Lord, you have searched me and known me. And then later it says, oh, Lord, you know it all together, that God is interested in us, that when our other relationships aren't panning out, when we're not sure if we should give the bid, when it all feels very vulnerable, God knows us and is always bidding for us, even though he doesn't need to. 
it, he's so gracious in that. And so resting in that relationship we have with him, like I said, is foundational to be able to go out and bid for connection in relationships and get those started. Mm. Good stuff. Insightful. Uh, I, I shouldn't say stuff. In <laughs> Very I insightful. Word, Thank you, Heidi. We, we have more to talk about here on Mental Health Monday. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. The Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, on behalf of Concordia Plan Services, Lutheran Housing Support Corporation, Concordia University System, Lutheran Church Extension Fund, the LCMS Foundation, and Corporate Synod, daily reaches out to our members and partners, working together to support our local, global, and international ministries, church workers, and LCMS initiatives at large to carry the mission forward and to serve each other in love. Opportunities to serve, lcms.org careers. I'm World Lutheran News Digest host Kip Allen. Neither pandemic, weather, nor security concerns stop Lutherans from lending their voices to this year's March for Life. LCMS Life Ministry Director Deaconess Tiffany Manor and I discuss what happened Wednesday at 2.30 and Saturday at 9.30 on Worldwide KFUO, the messenger of good news. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Mental Health Monday here on the Coffee Hour, talking with Deaconess Heidi Gaiman about relationships and how do relationships grow. We were talking about vulnerability before we went to the break, and uh, now on to how relationships grow. Heidi? Sure. So relationships start with these bids for connection, and then they grow with the same thing. <laughs> So that's the good news. All you need to remember from this episode is bids for connection. Um, but I think we we really want it to be way more complex than that, because if we had some kind of checklist, it's actually easier. These bids for connection, as we talked about at the beginning, is kind of painful and in some ways uh, wonderful and, and joyous and just really uh, filling, but in other ways can feel draining and can also feel sad when they aren't received well. And so let's talk about that reception of it for growing relationships. And so there are three responses to bids for connection that I brought up at the top of the hour. One is turning towards it, which means we, A, first acknowledge the bid. That doesn't mean we have to be like, I see that you bid for connection, right? That would be really awkward. You could do that. Maybe that's useful for you. But we're going to turn toward it in some way by saying hello. That's a way that we turn toward a bid. Or by smiling at somebody. Also can be verbal or nonverbal. It might be further invitation. Um, if your spouse is watching TV and you start talking to them, they turn toward it by looking at you instead of the TV or turning the volume down. Those are ways that we turn toward one another in connection. Uh, on social media, it's commenting or responding or even sending a like or a care emoji up, uh, turning toward it. It's so funny because social media can also bring where we turn toward, but whoops, we accidentally turned away the same time. And so be a little <laughs> bit aware that social media brings up some weirdness in this bidding. And uh, it's a little hard to read, if you will. 
The second way that we respond is turning away, which is simply ignoring or missing the bid. So this is not an intentional thing. This is just where we we dropped it. We didn't know um, or we ignore it sometimes on purpose, but it's it's not the malicious response, if you will. A relationship can take some turning away, you know. Uh, so even if you say no to someone, if someone invites you for coffee and you say, you know, I have so much on my plate this week, I can't do it, I'm so sorry. That's still actually turning toward because you responded to their bid, even though the answer was no. So don't think that there's no boundaries in this. Um, so that's turning away. The last one is the most painful and that's turning against someone. And that is rejecting the bid in an argumentative or belligerent way. So we turn against someone when we respond with hurtful sarcasm, not fun bantering sarcasm, but when we say something that we intentionally know will jab at them. Um, we turn against someone when we uh, yell at them, when we uh, embarrass them in front of other people. Those are the kinds of things that include turning against. And we, we certainly do that in the body of Christ. Uh, I, I think of some of us have been involved in painful voters meetings at times. Uh, so it's important that within the body of Christ, we understand these bids uh, in those unique relationships uh, just as much as we do in our personal relationships with our family members and our friendships and things like that. So um, I encourage you to just practice this week. This is just a little uh, coffee hour mental health Monday exercise for you to take with you, even though this is not therapy, it'll be fun to engage in. But just pay attention to how you're bidding and how you're turning towards, turning away or turning against. And again, this is the Gottman research and they literally just watched people in their, they call it the love lab. It's a little Airbnb, if you will, where they get to see what they do. and they know from years of research that this is humanity. This is how we respond to one another is one of these three ways. So just pay attention to it. You don't judge yourself for it. Just kind of pay attention. What's going on in your relationships? It's so easy to find ourselves, especially in very intimate relationships, marriage, parenting with our own parents to turn against in ways that we wouldn't out there in the world with regular people because it feels safe. And so pay attention to uh, whether we're giving those that we love the most the best in our lives as far as our bids for connection. So my question for Andy and Sarah uh, is what benefits have you found in having relationships and turning towards people who are different from you? Hmm. So when you've put yourself out there, what benefits have you found in that? I like, uh, I can think of one person in particular who I actually met at <laughs> radio show in Austin several years ago, really randomly. We were both, you know, introverts hanging out in the corner of the room, but she and I were such different people and we spent the next four days, um, enjoying each other's company in a way that I had not enjoyed somebody's company at in a long time because we were very different people and we were able to have these really deep conversations <laughs> about all of these, mm -hmm. like world world and life changing topics about all of this stuff because we we came from two different points of view and respected each other's opinions and i think that happens a lot mm -hmm. with with some of my other friends um who who are uh, come from very different points of view you get this this deeper relationship because you're not just um telling each other the same things or agreeing with each other mm -hmm. just like oh yeah i agree with you on everything that you believe you get this deeper understanding of of the things around you and of cultural things and, and society and, and all these things that you can talk about because you don't mm -hmm. see eye to eye on things but you have to have that respect um otherwise it doesn't work mm -hmm. yeah the depth i heard you say the word deeper mm -hmm. a billion times and i do think you're right <laughs> there's a depth to the relationships where we broaden our perspective and they are willing to broaden theirs as well. That's a really cool thing. And God puts those together. How about you, Andy? Uh, similar. Uh, I would say that being around and having relationships with people who are different from me, whether it's worldviews or culture um, or ethnicity, is that you know, sometimes when I think about what's important to me, I wonder, is it important to me because this is just what I've always known or what I've grown up with or what I'm around the most? But then being around people who are different from me, I think 
quite often affirms those things, like the, the things mm. that I value the most, mm. um, especially mm -hmm. if they value something very different from what I do. I think it's very, it, it makes me think about, well, why is it that I really value these things? And mm -hmm. I think it's mm. affirming in, in that way. And also uh, mm -hmm. just to, uh, broadens my, my perspective on the, the people around me and the people that I serve, whether it's here or in my congregation or, or other ways in, in my community. Um, who they mm -hmm. are and, and uh, how can I better serve them as a follower of Jesus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really helpful. I think it's a cultural misconception that friendships are built on turning to one another and saying, oh, we have something in common. Okay, that is a good thing. And we have relationships like that in our life. And that certain especially is a good start to a relationship, but that is not what grows a relationship, right? What grows a relationship is what you're talking about, diving a little bit deeper and getting to the place where we don't look the same, because guess what? None of us look exactly the same, right? At some point, if a relationship is going to grow, it's going to hit a place where we're not in the same place, where we have different views on things. And so we get to that deeper stuff when we find ourselves in a place where people look a little bit different from us. And so there's two things that I like to say grow a relationship then when we look at uh, God's work in our life, awkwardness and friendship. And so we'll talk, sorry, not friendship, awkwardness and forgiveness. We'll talk about those things more in February when we get to intimacy versus isolation. And I write a lot about it in my book that comes out in April too. So I'm sure we'll return to those two things. Man, who knew I was so good at relationships because of awkwardness? I must. Yeah, I know, be right? You're welcome. Shame. We all feel better <laughs> today. <laughs> awkward. You've been listening to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere. Anywhere.